Hello and welcome back to the channel, it's Mark from PowerSonic and Apprentice 1 to 1. Today we're going to have a look through a time lapse of the construction of this board. But before we get into that I want to explain exactly what this is. We've put this together to use at the trade shows coming up through the rest of 2024 and perhaps even beyond into the future. And next up is a lecture Harrogate, it's the 16th and 17th of May. I'm going to be there for the duration of the event, my guys are going to be there as well. Matthew and Nathan, so they've helped me construct bits and pieces of this, as you will see in the course of the time lapse. And the idea is it helps encourage some discussion and debate around safe isolation and the challenges we have with that now as solar PV, battery storage and other renewable technologies start to play a part in electrical systems at a commercial and domestic level. We'll have a look through this board a bit closer up, then we'll run through the time lapse before I close up with some thoughts on what is to come at these trade shows and um, some of the things that you can come and get involved with on the stand as well. Let's move in a bit closer and see exactly what this is all about. So we'll start at the beginning and I guess that is the uh, meter. So this is the main AC meter coming into, if you imagine, a domestic installation. So we've got our service head coming in onto this meter. We then run out to our uh, tails isolator switch which isolates the tails coming into the gateway. If I open this gateway up, we can have a better look of what's inside. For those of you who are not familiar with these, I have covered them in great detail on the channel already. So if you wanna delve back and look at some of those videos, please feel free. But basically the grid power comes up to this MCB here, and then that allows power to run through into the clever electronics at the top of this gateway that allows people to run both in a grid tied and off grid mode where you wouldn't even know one or the other had happened. Um, and it allows for great flexibility in terms of connecting renewable equipment together. So the load side of this then drops out and basically that connects over into this consumer unit over here. Come back to that in a minute. Over on this side, we've got what's termed the AIO. So it could be any AC coupled battery system. And that drops down, runs away to the bottom here and connects into this M2 AC isolator down here. We've got our battery warning label. We could in the future add an AC coupled battery if we wish, but for the minute, we're not doing that. Um, I've got concerns around safety of this pin at a trade show, lithium batteries inside and all of the rest of that stuff, plus any access to live electrical systems when you've got regular consumers wandering about is something I'm not quite comfortable with. However, we also have the PV side here, so we can drop out of the PV um, isolator, uh, MCB RCD, as you can see, tied together up here. Um, we'll drop down there, runs across and then drops down into this M2 AC isolator over on the right hand side. And again, you could connect in a PV inverter if we wish. All of the connections are in everything are there waiting for that. On to the DC side of things. So if you imagine this is up in the loft, this is one of the um, automatic shutdown devices. Lots of safety features built in. It does comply with 609.47-1 and 3. Um, if the AC supply is cut off to this, so in this case, the AC rotary isolator down here is operated, or the main service fuse or whatever else is pulled, this would lose its supply and disconnect the DC strings leading from the loft down to the DC isolator at the inverter location. That way your cabling running through the building in the event of an emergency is disconnected. It also has a temperature sensor in it. So if the environment it's installed within, usually on the underside of an array, exceeds 70 degrees Celsius, it shuts down as well. Super duper great product. We've also got the DC isolate here, which is really important in terms of maintenance for both of the SPDs, which we've also got included on here. This one from Surge Protection Devices and also the inverter itself. And again, we've got the string wires for these. They're ready to connect into an inverter if and when we ever have one. The idea is in the future, we may pop one into position um, and it's all cabled up and ready to go. Uh, we do also have an earth rod. So you see over here, we've got a nice chunky earth running down and it is appropriately terminated onto this earth rod. I maybe need a bag of soil just to pop into um, on this end to make it a little bit more realistic. But yeah, that's sat doing its thing. The consumer unit, so we see we've got our tails stringing along into here. We've got our main switch, RCBO. I am gonna pop an SPD in here as well. So this is a bi-directional RCBO, which is another important topic at the minute. That'll be a good one to discuss. And we have dropped a three phase MCB in here, really just to demonstrate locking one off. Obviously three phase has no, 
no place within a single phase distribution board, but it is just for demonstration purposes. I'm going to end up taking it out. It just seemed like a good idea at the time. I've got some steel containment, which connects into this USB socket. Um, and again, that's just their functionality in terms of being able to demonstrate a lock off on a single circuit. But equally, if we do get this energized, nice USB points so we can charge up some of the smart devices is always a win. We've got the AC meter over on this side and that's for your generation. So as we said, the, the PV inverter runs down across into this AC isolator then fires back up into the meter and then it would run off to an inverter if there was one present. The pink terminal block here is for the uh, from the Kranis collection. So this is your functional air for those of you who don't know, Proteus made that up in honor of Dan Darren Kranis who asked for one and we now have very popular pink functional air terminal blocks. These over this side are just for when we connect this up to the mains. We've got terminals ready there to wire in and energize this board if we need. Basically they sit between the meter and the main incoming electrical connection at the shows if we liven this up and use it. Um, yeah, I'll take you through the time lapse, show you how it's built and we can have a chit chat about more of the products as we move along through the video and I'll catch up with you at the end. So we're going to dive into Modex Soft Electrical OM and build up a circuit chart and report pack for this particular board we're taking to the trade shows and it's a pretty moving target because there will be different earthing arrangements at all of those locations but you can see within your initial supply setups you can even calculate what the anticipated value of RA should be for an earth electrode. This stuff is actually insane in what it can do. And you can see here, we're just setting out a base um, TNCS system, and we're saying it's a portable stand. Um, you know, all of those things are user selectable. There is some more traditional options that are gonna be way more applicable in 99% of cases. This is super duper unusual, but as you can see, you can set your ZE values. You can also adjust what your PFCs might be and display your meters, tails, and other current protective devices. You can see in here, I'm dropping in the gateway. So that is gonna house um, the final circuits that lead off to everywhere else as our first port of call. And you can specify your cable type. There's loads of options within the list to choose from, and it will pre-populate your correction factors and such based upon that, which is really useful. And you can see here, you've got a full list of circuit protective devices to choose from as well. So with this one, we're gonna call it the Give Energy Gateway, just so it's clearly labeled and marked on those schematics. And we've got some final circuits running off from that and distribution boards. Now I did make a mistake in not setting the actual PV inverter as a solar generator. So we're gonna go back and adjust that in a minute. But for now, this is the AC coupled Give Energy all in one. And again, you can choose your particular circuit breakers for that product. In this case, they are ABBs with a tied on RCD. So you're taking up four ways within the enclosure for each singular circuit. And you can see here, we're gonna set those to the 32 amp rated device. We're gonna choose it as a renewable source and set it to six kilowatts. Weirdly, they are type AC RCDs within the first version of the gateways. They've subsequently changed and they're now type A's, but we're gonna set it as we have it. Um, this is some old stock that we've got in the business that we're not using on client facing installs due to the fact they are type AC RCDs. You can see here, we're now running through the solar PV inverter. And again, choosing the correct cable installation method. This is going in trunking, trunking horizontal on the wall. And again, we've got our ABB breaker with the AC RCD. And you can see we're getting warnings about that. So Electrical OM is aware that that could be an issue and it's highlighting it for us. We will get other warnings. It's really difficult to set out selectivity and such when you're working from a 13 amp plug top and then sticking main tails outside of that further downstream and much bigger over current protected devices. So we're gonna to have to live with that. You can see I'm dropping a single solar panel onto this one because I don't fancy setting up a whole array out at a trade show somewhere. Um, and again, we've got the domestic consumer unit, which is sitting on this just to offer a final circuit. And in this case, we've got the Proteus over current protective device, which is one of the um, double pole bi-directional type A RCBOs. Um, and I'm just cleaning up the supply down to that to make sure we've got everything set up in terms of the cable into that board, shuffling stuff around so it displays a little more clearly and seeing if we can get rid of as many of these warnings as possible. 
We're going to set our socket circuit, which is just a single metal clad socket with USB fronts on. And again, you can dictate your cable installation method. And we've got our overcurrent protected device there in the pre-populated list, the two pole RCBO. And as again, just try and neaten everything up. I'm trying to make it fit more real world with what's actually on the board. So the way it reads is the way it sits. Um, just seem to make more sense with this being something that's going to be out on a trade show stand to try and align it with people's eyeballs who maybe aren't familiar with a schematic diagram. You can see just running off the report there and the level of data within that is nuts. Obviously there is the issues around the um, critical errors it's detected but we can get away from that, it's the nature of the beast. Okay, so you can see we've got some huge casters to go on the bottom of this pallet. These are really big, chunky, off-road type wheels. Bigger than I was expecting, to be fair. However, they're going to be super useful in loading this into and out of vehicles and also allowing us to move it around the trade shows really easily um, so it's not going to be difficult for us lifting things in and out, chucking boards up on the wall and stuff. We can just roll this around and the idea is it's super duper easy to get set up at every event we're attending. The pallet is a nice strong one, so we've got a, a good base to work from. You need those strong foundations. And this is quite a long time lapse that I have sped up as fast as it will go. I haven't edited through it because there's just too much of it to filter through. We're going to run and gun. But you can see here I'm trying to figure out the best angle and position for the plywood on the pallet. I wanted to think about both ease of moving it around and structure and safety of this thing, but also coming and interacting with it at the trade show. So it's a good visual aid. There is no point having something that is unusable, but looks nice. So we're trying to cover off all those bases. And down the back here, I'm just busy trying to get the props set up. So we've got things um, nicely supported while we get the first hookup of this into position. We do make it more sturdy later on with some more structural elements but this was just a rough pin so we can kind of get it set out into the place we need it. You'll see as it moves around in a minute, the rough idea with the props and how it will move around so I can kind of have a play about with it and decide what's best just with some bits of timber and screws first up. So you can see here we've got the, the board kind of prop now and just taking off the extra screw lengths coming through from some of the equipment and the vinyl wrap is all on there as well. So the vinyl wrap on the front was to just really dress it up a bit nicer and make it look a bit neater. So we're going to pop some bits of timber framing on there again just to steady all this up and allow for the black sheet to cover over down the sides. So with this black sheet we wanted it to kind of cover up the, the structural elements at the back so we're not got those on show. I think that covers it up quite nicely. And you can see there's lots of toing and throwing and running around. I did think oh, I'll use the cable stapler and then I realised it worked fire because there's no cable in it. Um, so we resorted back to some screws and washers just to get this fixed onto the pallet itself. And we're going to dress all of that up with some nice planed timber once it's finished just to dress around the top, uh, around the bottom edges um, of the sides, front and rear as well. But I think that's a, a good base to go from. You can see there is some equipment now on there. So we've got the Give Energy all uh, gateway, sorry, mounted. We've got some trunking and we've got some isolators and meters popped onto that board as well. I'm just having a play around with the skirting board to see if that would work for dressing in around the edges. It didn't, so we won't be doing that. Um, starting to work away at some of the cables on this now. And I thought I'd made a mistake with this because I'd brought the... Projoy down into the DC isolator um, rather than taking it off to the SPD enclosure you'll see later on I made some adjustments on that but I'd actually done it right first time that is how it should go so the um, PV generation can be isolated and then move on to the SPD enclosure but yeah when you're in the thicker things sometimes you don't think as clearly as you should and when everything's so close together and you're getting confused with what's what mistakes are even easier to make but you see we've got the flexi tails and again they're going into the proteus um, main tails isolator switch you see the gateway wobbling around there because i've not actually secured it onto its bracket as yet just to allow a bit of flexibility in dropping those tails in and out with them being close up to each other it made life a little bit easier so you can see here we've got some um, flex cable that i'm just taking some of the inner cores out of to wire up to the meter so the idea is with those Henley blocks that you can see is our main supply would come into that and then we can wire out from those Henley blocks 
to the meter. It's just an easier way, I thought, of making the terminations simpler when we are at trade events if we're going to liven up this board. Obviously, it'll all be tested off and we know it's safe to use. Um, so if we want to have some live energised equipment on there, we can do. My own personal view is that we won't be doing that because there's mo regular members of the public wandering past who aren't going to be electricians. It's impossible to keep an eye on everyone at all times. So my preference is to leave this dead. But I've built it in a way that it could be used live if anybody wanted to do so. And you see we've got the Proteus single phase consume unit going on there at the top corner. And we've also got this Proteus plastic enclosure that we use a lot for our SPDs. Obviously with DC systems, you want to try and keep your enclosures plastic as far as possible. And they are a really roomy enclosure to work with if you're using your Wagos um, to break out from. I'll show you that a bit later on. But you can see here we've got the M2 circuit accessories as well for the um, rotary isolators. These are 63 amp options for both what would be the AIO on the left and the solar PV on the right. Um, just allows for lots of termination rooms. You're oversizing the um, rotary isolator as well, so you're not at any danger of causing any stress to it. And they are among the best rotary isolators on the market. We've tried loads and they're very, very difficult to beat. You can see I'm using some HR7 cable here for the AIO or AC coupled battery system output and also the PV output. So the AIO is gonna go on the left-hand side rotary isolator and just drop straight down through that trunk in into it and the PV is going to run across and jump into the rotary isolator you see on the right hand side there. I just made a mistake with that because I was putting an earth intake across to this consumer unit and then cut it short to put it into the earth Henley block. Again, that's the nature of the beast with everything being close together. And it made me resort to having a nice refreshment and a think about things to make sure I wasn't going to make any of those mistakes moving forward. And it's just mapping out what, what I'm intending to do because I wanted to keep it visual and I thought if I put those the tails leading across to the consumer unit in the trunking obviously there won't be much of a visual aid because they're in trunking so I thought I'd run these across where you can see more what's going on um, pop a little opening in the bottom of this board and we'll just put a tails gland in and bring those tails and main earth across and into you can roughly see the plan there then spent a bit of time trying to get these um, MC4s out of the pro -Droy. It's difficult to get the removal tool in there with all the connects underneath it, so that was a bit of a struggle. Um, and as I said, I thought I'd then made a mistake in the way these DC cables were wired up, so I do actually change that in a little bit of time. So we've got some circuit accessories down the bottom there as well. You'll see the metal clad options. We're going to drop those in with the rest of this as well in just a little bit. So we're back at it now, we're popping in those um, flex cables to the rotary isolators and you can see Matthew and Nathan have turned up. So they've jumped onto the job to help me out a little bit as well. So they're scurrying around, doing a few bits and pieces in the background, tidying up um, and you will see Matthew jump in here and help me out in wiring up. But I'm just popping all of the ferrules on the end. Obviously you need to ferrule your uh, flexi strand cables and again loads of room to wire these up. I've also brought the ProJoy's AC cable down to this rotary isolator on the PV side. Now the idea of that is if it's operated, it kills the power leading up to the, the ProJoy and it will then open up a, a form of DC isolation up at the array. Useful for firefighters or any kind of maintenance that's going on to know that the strings leading down to your inverter location are de-energized. So it's a really useful safety feature outside of anything else we're doing here and I thought it made sense to include that on the safe isolation board. You can see Matt is just having a, a little measure up and conflag with me here. We're popping our um, steel containment in that I've got him busy working on because apparently I'm not skilled and able enough to do steel containment and Matthew's had to take over that aspect while I'm working on the SPD enclosure down at the bottom. And you can see what I'm saying about changing the um, DC cabling coming off the ProJoy down to the SPD enclosure. And I subsequently realized that was the wrong thing to do and I'd done it right first time and we make that change and swap it back. I'm using Wagos inside the SPD enclosure to break out the cabling. Basic principle is that the, the DC power comes down from the array to the DC isolator. It then runs off into the SPD enclosure to the Wago terminals and it breaks out from those into the SPD and also onto the inverter. And that way, if somebody isolates the, the DC isolator, it kills off the power to both the SPD and also the um, inverter. So you've got that safe working condition at both an AC and DC level when you need it. 
Um, it's often overlooked and some people will say you don't need those DC isolators because they're built into the inverter. But if we're truly serious about safe isolation, we're putting that front and center above anything else, really you do. And if you say in otherwise, um, I'd, have a, I'd have a think about that because it's something that I wouldn't support certainly in terms of safe isolation, which is why we've included the setup on this board we've got here. So you can see with a meter, um, that's on the, the PV side of things. So again, I'm just wiring that into the AC isolator side. So we basically have the gateway feeding power down to that. It then comes out of the rotary isolator into the meter. And we would then wire out from that to a solar PV inverter, but there's no space on the board for the PV inverter or the solar panels. So at the minute that just ends at the, um, at the AC meter on the generation side. So you can see now Matthew's coming in to make his connections into this metal clad socket um, and pop these tails across from the gateway to the consumer unit as well. Um, I've already popped some cable tie bases on there to secure those into so we can keep them nice and tight on the board but also be you know, a visual clue as to what's going on. I thought that made more sense than hiding those away in trunking. We might revisit that in the future. We could change the whole layout. Who knows? This is just the first run out and we was winging it um, based on how we're other experience of building some stuff like this for colleges and also to use here at the academy space we've got. Um, and you can see there he's um, got those tails in nice and snug, just loose fit. Uh, I've been designated the cable tire because apparently that's my level in um, proceedings. And once I'm technically able and competent like Matthew, I may be allowed to start messing around with steel containment and doing those tails. Um, so hopefully once he's got this finished, I will jump back onto things. You can see Nathan's busy in the background playing with his fishing rods. He was um, going off to do some carp fishing um, and used the time productively to help us building the isolation board by working on his fishing tackle. Uh, Matthew's busy here with the, the main earth cable coming down to our earth rod because we're gonna put an earth rod on here as well. He's used a bit of heat shrink and popped a bit of 16 mil and a lug on the end ready to go for that. I'm back in shot now, doing my cable tie duties and making sure they're snugly into position. And we're getting towards being near enough complete with this in terms of the electrical equipment that's connected. Um, we'll run through it all at, at the end again so you can see exactly what's what. But I'm just popping the earth rod up on the bottom there and I was thinking about where best to place this to be fair because it's difficult to illustrate something that would normally be smacked into the ground on, on a rig. But, you know, I thought we came up with a reasonable idea of sticking it horizontal across the bottom. I may put a bag of soil on the end of it just for extra effects down the road. Um, Matty's got us clamped on at the end there and I've just popped the pink uh, functional earth block on there from the Kranis collection. So if anybody is wanting to have a functional earth um, in and amongst all of this, that is covered off as well. We cannot forget the important labelling aspect. Anyone who's involved in the renewables area of industry will know labels form a big part of what we do. Um, and that is also the case here with the isolation board. I am going to produce a full line chart and um, report pack through Electrical OM that covers this install in full. So we can have that on the stand as well with a little document holder um, just to put some final finishing bits and pieces on there. And I may grab a shot of that and drop it in at the end of this video as well. So you can see what I'm talking about, but otherwise that's it about buttoned up, ready to roll. Okay, those of you following along with the content for the last couple of years will know I've been going on about these previous RCBOs and the bi-directional nature of them. And today that is more relevant than ever before because we've got the draft for public comment around the flow of energy through of current protected devices related to renewables and even down the line, perhaps some of the electric vehicles that are going to allow that flow of energy in both directions as well. I'm going to take you through this board we've got here because the focus of that for the trade shows coming up around safe isolation is in part due to that direction of energy flow and how we make ourselves safe from that whilst working on electrical systems. So as part of the safe isolation board we're taking to these trade shows, so it's going to be at Alex in Harrogate, next on the 16th and 17th of June, but then also, sorry, 16th, 17th of May, but also over at the installer show down at the NEC on the 25th to the 27th of June. But I've had these line charts made, or I've made these line charts through Electrical OM um, to display what is actually going on with this system. So we've got the direction of energy flow, how everything sets out. So in the gateway here, you can see we've got our 
MCB's tied to the RCDs, but they're taking up four ways each within that. So that's for the AIO and the PV. It does cover off that aspect, but there's a lot of space being harboured by those devices in that goal. We've got the full circuit arrangement for this entire board, which is laid out in there. I've also got the entire design pack report for this, this test board. It's amazing that a board like this can be turned into information like that by Electrical ON. The level of data that's extracting, insane. We've also got the line chart for the um, Proteus consumer unit up here, and that also includes the bi-directional RCBO. Now these are type A, they're also double pole. The range of Proteus stuff is a no-brainer for us at the renewables level. You can get your buzz bar mounted SPDs, so you're taking up less space, a single module for your RCBOs that work in a bi-directional capacity. Um, the innovation that they're doing is something else. Even at a three phase level, when you look at their um, four pearl RCBO that fits in a regular spine board. Don't want to go on too much about that in this video, but you get the vibe that is something that is super duper important for us installing renewable systems. Down at the bottom, we've got the line chart for the AC coupled battery system and the PV inverter, if ever there to live in these locations, even to the point it includes um, the solar panel aspect on there as well. So, <coughs> so we've suggested a single solar panel because I don't fancy setting up a whole array at an Alexa or an installer show. Um, but yeah, that's the reason this is also important. If you are coming onto the stand to have a look at this, obviously understanding the direction of energy flow and where you're making an isolation and for what purpose at both AC and DC is super duper important. And whilst the changes in bi-directional RCDs with Amendment 3 maybe don't correlate directly to that, it's still an important you know, it's in and around it, isn't it, for want of a better phrase. Um, and equally, if you're at election, you're interested in having a look at these devices and understanding the differences by between something like this and something like this. If you're not familiar with renewables, come on and have a look. It doesn't have to be about isolation. I'm there for the conversation at any level around all of that. And it'd be great to see as many of you as possible jumping in to have a chat with us. Um, and if you've not seen, over on YouTube, the IET, Mark Coles, has got a little video out explaining exactly what all this is about. There's also the CEF Tech Talks. Darren Franis from the ECA has got stuff out. Efix has shared a short clip as well. It's already piling out there, and we've got an exciting episode planned with some amazing guests from industry, no more clues than that, coming in to explain this in more detail in the next couple of weeks or so. Very exciting. So if you found that interesting, running through these products, fitting them onto this board and getting ready for the lecture. We are also going to be at the installer show, which is the 25th to the 27th of June at the NEC in Birmingham. I'm going to be there for the duration of that event as well. And this board and the Safe Isolation team will be present and correct at that one. So please do get along. There'll be links in the description where you can go off and register for these trade shows should you wish. This hasn't been an easy task putting it together. It's taken us a bit of time. We are busy in the day job. It's summer now, sort of, and obviously renewables installers gets hyper busy, but we wanted to make the effort. This is our commitment to the campaign. It's as professional as we can make it look on the skills and resources that we have available to us. And I think it's come up pretty well. I'm quite happy with it. It would have been really easy just to lash something on a board that we then reused here at the Academy slap some paint on it and all the rest of it but we wanted to really make this stand out and be useful um, and I've covered some of the niche topics around diverted neutral currents and pen faults before and they're really interesting but very rare this is something that's going to be commonplace we want to focus on that it's productive helpful conversation starting um, efforts if you like and I'm there for that learning experience myself for anyone who does want to get involved with this campaign or join in um, it's open doors to everybody we've got loads of parts of industry involved already and my experience on the stands has been fantastic I've learned loads so if you want to spend a day on one of these stands at one of these shows please do get in touch we're always looking for volunteers we've got the CPS bodies behind it electric safety first um, ECA uh, we've got the IET, there is brands such as TIS, Super Rod, Martindale, loads of different individuals, Isolate for Life, Andy and Eddie, um, and obviously this is all leading towards the Safe for September campaign later on this year. None of what we are doing is replacing anything else, eFix are also involved as well. Um, it is really just to share and promote the solid work that lots of people have already done around this topic bring it front and centre at the trade shows and in the real world, see if we can affect some change in the EAS document as to how our CPS um, audits take place. We'll see if that does come to fruition down the line. 
And yeah, just to try and prevent some of these nasty injuries that take place and even worth, even worse loss of life. And the super rod surveys and the data within that are central to my effort getting involved with this and trying to push this forward late last year. I heard and sat through Malcolm Duncan's presentation over an event in Ireland and I couldn't just stand by and do nothing or go off in my own tangent of content that no one's really going to pay any attention to. So I thought I would make an effort at bringing other people who were doing things in their own way all together, all pushing behind the same cause all at once. And the support coming into that has been incredible. And if you are out there as a content creator or part of industry and you want to be involved, please do so. This isn't about anybody's own ego being better or worse than anyone else. It's about the topic and doing something about it. Thank you for watching. I hope to see as many of you as possible at the Elect shows and at Installer Show later this year. If you've got any questions, as always, drop them in below. And otherwise, I will see you on the next one.